Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Yunus Shafiri is here and always in the series about content for beginners, we are going to expand on the generic parts. We are going to learn about variance, right? So we'll be learning about variance, contravariance, invariance, and covariance. So let's get started. One of the main important things about OOP is the inheritance, right? So basically you can do something like following. I will show you some examples here in Java. Let's go back to Kotlin right in a minute let me just expand this we know that integers and float and doubles inherit from numbers right so we can do something like fun you can create an integer like that you can do integer five okay no in java you have to do new right we have this one you can also create let's say a double and also we can create a generic number right so you can do this number number in Java or in OOP in general, we can do the following. This number can get from integer. Okay, so we can assign an integer or number or double that number. Okay, that's one important thing about OOP. But we will produce a problem right now. Let's say that I have a list and this list is a list of integers. Okay, let's call it integer list like that and it will be just a simple array list. So we can have this line of code, right? Great. Now, let's say that I'm having also a list of number and let's call it just number list. Can we do number list equal integer list? We can't. Why? We will find about that in the end of that video. Okay. So the main idea here is that we know that integer inherent from number, but as our intuition tells us that list of integers is also a list of number, but the intuition is not the same as the compiler. So the compiler won't agree on that, okay? This is dependent on the variance concept. So we will understand about it. So the main idea to differentiate here is that this number class and integer class, and this integer is a subclass of this number. But this list, don't call it a class. List of integer isn't a class, it's a type, all right? So list of integer isn't a subtype of list of number. We have to do it explicitly to mention it for the job. In Kotlin, we can do this and it will work. I will show it to you in a moment. Okay, let's create basically the same thing. Now, let's say that we have the same example in Kotlin. We have an integer list. It's a list of int. Okay, it contains just one and two. And you have a number list, all right? Can we do this number list equal integer list? Yes, we do. We can do this without any problem. Now, there is a hack here, all right? There is a hack here. There is a difference, right? Now, this isn't a problem of Java or Kotlin, okay? It's just the approach that Java took and Kotlin took for generic is different. Okay, but there is a problem I will show you also in Kotlin here in example. Let's say that I have the same exact list, but not a list. It will be mutable list. Okay, now this will produce problem. Let me just mention that mutable list like that. This will cause a problem. Okay, this is the same problem with Java problems. All right, so there is a difference between read only list and the mutable list. We'll learn about that at the end of the video, what this problem is called. It's called invariance problem. So basically, the problem is as the following int is a subtype of number. Great, but mutable list of int, it's not a subtype of mutable list of num. You have to do that explicitly to the compiler. I will create some hierarchy here of classes to show you the examples. Let's say that we have user, okay? There is user type here in the base class, right? And this administrator and normal user extend from this user. So basically we pass one and two here, and this administrator have some authorization, can do this, and this normal user has only some password. All right, so this is the class hierarchy we'll be working on. Now, if you go here and start creating, let's say some kind of list to explain the concept of covariance, let's say that I have a list of admins and list of normal user, we can do the following. You can create user list and it will be list of user, right? We can do the following. We can give here admins, it will work normally. We can give also normal users, it will work normally. This is called covariance. What does it mean is the following. The generic type is in the list, right? The list is generic. Now, we will go in a minute for that list. You will see here the list contains something called the out. This is how we can imply the covariant type for the elements of the list, all right? As you can see here in the documentation, let me expand a little bit. The type of the element is contained in the list. The list is covariant in its element type. If the generic type is covariant, that implies that we can use the subtype in the place of the supertype. 
that's the most important thing and that's the definition of cobain so let's go back here so we are using the subtype which are normal users and administrators in the place of users now when we can use this out can use it in two cases when the list here for example interface or class has elements of that type we can use the out that's the first one. Second one, when a class or interface has some methods that return this type. So it produces this type, okay? It doesn't take them as arguments, okay? So if you want to use them as the return types, you have to use the out here. So we, are, we can preserve the covariant aspect of the elements, all right? Now this problem, they are using it here also as parameters, as input, so they can consume them. Right, but as you can see, they are using this unsafe variance. Okay, so this will prevent or suppress error about various conf. If they delete that, they will have compilation error. So if you want to restrict the usage of T just for the return values, you can use out here like the following. If you put this T here element like T, it won't work. As you can see here, type T is declared out, but it occurs in position of N. We will learn about N in a minute. But if you use that unsafe variance annotation, it won't prompt an error, as you can see. Okay, so don't use that unless you are sure about what you are doing. All right, so we can delete that from here and you can delete that from here. Okay, that's the covariant aspect. All right, that's the first. We learn now about contravariance, which is kind of the reverse, right? We'll see an example. We'll see a famous example of the comparator. So let's say that I'm having here some comparators. Okay, so this will compare things. It's an interface. If you can go, if you can see the comparator here, it accepts an in. Okay, we will learn about this in a minute. Let's say that I'm having admin comparator that can compare administrators. And let's say also that I'm having a user comparator that can compare users, all right? Now, let's say that I'm having a comparator like the following. Okay, let's call it user comparator. Okay, and it's just a comparable of user, all right? Let's say that I, I want to assign this comparable here an admin comparator. What will happen? We can't do that. Why? Because the admin is just for the admins. You can use the admins to compare the user. Okay? You can do that. Can we do the reverse? Yes, we can do it. Let's say that here I'm having, let's just delete that. Let's say I'm having this admin comparator here. It is a comparable of administrator. All right? Let's say I want to assign this user a comparator. Can we do it? Yes, we can do it. Why? Because the comparable interface is contravariant. That's the thing you should remember, okay? So the intuition behind that is that it's like the following. We can use the user comparator because it's super type to compare administrator, which is a subtype. You can see the comparable here contains the n. This is a contravariant example. So if a generic type is contravariant, that means we can use the super type in place of the subtype, okay? That's the thing to remember. This is quite the opposite of covariant. As you can see here, we are using the super type, which is the user, in the place of subtype, okay? That's the thing to remember about contravariant. In general, we can use this contravariant aspect with the in keyword for classes or interfaces that use the parameter or the generic type as input for its functions, all right? So let's have also some example. So let's say I'm having a person that have function called do something. We can use that T here as parameter, E like that, like the following. But if you use the in here, we can use it as an input. We can't use it as a return type. Okay, so this can be used only as you can see here. This type parameter is declared as an in, but occurs in the position of an out. Okay, so we can use it as an input parameter. You can't use it in your class when your class have type of this E. For example, if you have some person and you want to assign a T, it won't work. Why? Here, as you can see, type parameter is declared as an in. If you want to use it as an out parameter and can be used also as parameter of field of that function, you can use the out here. Okay, but this will break. Okay. You can always use that annotation and save variance, okay, and save variance, but don't use it unless you have strong reason to do that, okay? So that's the main difference between covariance and contravariance. We use the out for covariance and the in for contravariance. But what if we delete all of that? That's called invariance. And this is the example showed here in the beginning. By default, the Java classes list are invariance. So what does it mean? It means that list of integers is not subtype of list of number, right? That's the main. We can use also covariance and contravariance in Java. You can do it like the following. You can do this, something like that. Extend this number, and this will work. It means that we are using covariance here, okay? So anything that extends the number can use it here. Can use it with, I don't know, double to work normally. 
On the other hand, if you want to use contra variance here, just use the super keyword here. It won't work here just because we are using covariance example. So this is the main difference between covariance, contra variance, and invariance. The last thing I want to show you here is the example of type erasure. What is type erasure? So here I'm having an error, all right? Can you spot the error? As you can see, we have a function called process list. This is the same here, process list. We are doing something like overloading function. We are using the same list, the same name of the function, but with different parameters. This is a list of end, and this is a list of string. But this will cause an error. Why? Because at runtime, not at compile time, the compiler will delete that string and delete that list. It becomes that the, this process list will take a list. We don't care about this if it is an end or it is string. Why? Because at compile time, the compiler will verify that you are using exactly the list of string here and the list of int here. All right. So at runtime, this information isn't available. They will be the same signature with the same name and the same also the same parameters. Okay. So you can't do that. You can't have two functions with the same everything with the same signature. Okay. So that's the thing to remember. This is not strictly to Kotlin. This this thing also exists in Java. If you go here and let me delete this A, you'll see a problem here also because we are using process list, process list, but with different parameters, okay? Different list string and list integers, right? So if you go here, the error, it will be clashes with process list. Both methods have the same erasure, okay? So this thing to remember. At compile time, at runtime, I mean, the compiler will delete that integer and this string. It will be just a list, okay? We don't care. So let's go back here. First of all, you can't do the following. You can't check if A, the A is a list of, let's say, names. Okay, you can't do even that check. Why? You cannot check for instance of a raised type. Okay, we can't check that. We can't check the, with the is. Okay, this is prohibited by the compiler. There is a workaround here in Kotlin. You can do that. You can do something called the GVM name annotation. You can annotate the classes or functions like the following. You can use this process list like the following, and we'll be naming it process list of string, for example. And here will be list of int so at the bytecode it will be this function name will be changed to process list of int and process list of string so that way we solve that problem of type erasure so just remember this thing at runtime, time we don't have the information about the exact type of that list okay so just now it is a list we don't have the information if it is a list of string or it is a list of so this is it for this video. I hope you understand what I was saying about contravariance, covariance, and invariance. These are things to remember, especially about Kotlin, the in and the out, and also that type ratio. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.